How you doing? I'm Kenny Joya. Welcome to another one of my tutorials. In this tutorial, we're going to learn how to track live drums, or more specifically rock drums, in a DAW. Now, although we're going to be using Pro Tools in this video, most of what we're going to be doing can be done in any DAW. So it's not Pro Tools specific. So let's take a look at the kit we're going to be recording. Here's a full shot of the kit. It's a four-piece Ludwig drum set. And here's the snare drum. There's a 14-inch by 5-inch Black Beauty snare which has a brass shell, so it gives it a very bright sound with a good attack. This is known to be one of the best sounding recording drums ever made. So I definitely recommend trying to find something like this. It just makes recording drums so much easier. And one of the most important sounds in any rock record is the snare drum. Next we have a 13 inch rack tom, and then a 16 inch floor tom. Both part of the standard Ludwig kit, where the snare was an add-on. Next we have the 22 inch kick drum. Notice how the front head is removed. Sometimes you have a hole in the front head, maybe it's a small one or a big hole, or like we're gonna do, just remove the whole front head. Either way, I wanna have access to put the microphone in there to capture the sound coming through the drum. Now the head on the kick drum is a single ply smooth head. You could also use a double ply, or even the systems that they sell now with a double ply head with some padding on it around the outside, and even including the front head with some padding on that as well. This way you don't need to use a pillow, but we're just using the single ply head, so we'll probably put a pillow or some dampening in there, just so it doesn't sound too live. Now for the snare and toms, we're gonna to wanna to use new heads. I recommend the Coded Ambassadors by Remo. Other companies make things that are similar, but the thing is these heads are not very thick, they're thinner heads, so they won't last quite as long as some of the heads used for rehearsal or for live touring, but because they're thinner and they have the coating on them, they're much brighter, which means you can use less EQ when recording. So you want the drums to be as bright as possible without adding any EQ. Now the drawback to that is the heads won't last as long. So if you're doing a record with say 10 or 12 songs, you might go through three or four sets of heads. But in the end, it's worth it because those heads do sound better. Now the room that we're working with here is 17 feet by 14 feet. So it's not really that big. Now if it was a bigger room or a longer room, I might try putting the drums in different spots to see where it sounds the best. But because this room isn't that big, I'm just going to put it in the center. But this room has 19 foot ceilings, so it makes it a lot easier to get a lot of ambience and room sound to make the drums sound huge. So if you have a room with very high ceilings, I would definitely recommend putting the drums in that room, especially if you want a very big live drum sound, which is what we want here. Next, we're going to decide how many microphones we're going to use to record the drums. We're going to need one for the kick for the snare, for the bottom of the snare, for the rack tom, the floor tom, a pair for the overheads, and a pair for the room mics. Now some engineers will use a mic for the hi-hat or the ride. Sometimes I'll use one for the ride, just for certain moments where the drum is playing very delicate light parts with the stick, you wanna hear that little brightness. In those situations, I might use a ride mic and I'll turn it on and off whenever the drum is playing that way on the ride cymbal. This particular song doesn't have any of that, so we don't need it. Now, as far as the hi-hat mic, I'm not a big fan of hi-hat mics. When you see where we put the overhead mics, you'll notice that we don't really need it because we'll be pointing down towards the drums, picking up the hi-hat as well. And with all the years I've been recording drums, I always find myself not using that mic during the mix down, so I stopped even recording one because I really like the hi-hat sound through the overheads. I'm not really a big fan of a close mic hi-hat. But if you like that sound, feel free to use it. Just roll off all the low end and the mid range and boost the highs in that mic so it's not really picking up the drums, just the hi hat. But I really find, and you'll see, we're not going to really need a hi hat mic. So we'll be using nine microphones to record the drums. And those microphones will be plugged into a snake like this one here. And that snake is patched into our mic preamps. I'm using one like this. We would adjust the input, making sure the mic doesn't distort, and the output, sending our level to the DAW. This one also has buttons for phase reversal and 48 volt power supply, also known as phantom power. We use that button for condenser microphones because they need phantom power, whereas dynamic microphones don't. In fact, make sure you turn that off when you're using dynamic microphones if you can. I'm also using a mic preamp like this one, where you could adjust the gain right here, also has a polarity switch or a phase reversal. 
and again, 48 volt power supply. This one also has a pad on it. So if bringing this all the way down doesn't give us a low enough level, it's still distorting, we can hit this pad button, it'll bring the level down by a certain amount, so it won't distort anymore. And the mic preamps are all patched into our audio interface here. 16 input, 16 outputs. Now you might be using something simpler like this, where it's the audio interface and mic preamp built into one unit. You plug the mics right into here, and just the input gain right here. Now for some of these inputs, I'm using a recording console, which you might be as well. Now this console has EQs built into it, but we're not going to use them. We're going to put the fader up at zero, bypass the EQ, and just use the mic preamp up here, just to keep the path as simple as possible. We'll do all the processing inside the DAW, or in Pro Tools. By doing it this way, we don't have to commit to the EQ or compression settings recording to disk. All the changes we make with plugins for EQ, compression, transient stuff, it's all going to be on playback, just for monitoring. So we'll get the sound we want, but what's recording to disk is just the drum sound to the microphone to the preamp recorded right to disk. This way we could change it later if we don't like what we did. So now we're ready to start creating some tracks to record our drums to. But first, let's go to the I.O. window, right over here, I.O. And these are the inputs set up on our audio interface. 1 through 16, you might have less or more. Just to make things easier, we're going to name all our inputs based on what drum they're miking. So we'll put kick, snare, snare bottom, and so on. Hit OK. Now we'll start creating some tracks. We're going to need nine audio tracks. We're going to use mono for now. You could use stereo for the overheads and the rooms, but I'll show you why in a second. I don't like to do that. Let's go to the mix window. It's easy to see it there. And here's our tracks. Start off by naming them. If you notice, the outputs are already set up here, main output. These are set up to my main speakers. If it doesn't happen automatically for you, you just change it here. Now we'll set up the inputs. Go to our kick track and choose input one, which is the kick. And then the snare. Now there's a shortcut for this in Pro Tools I want to show you. With all the tracks selected, on Mac, if you hold down Option and Shift, anything you select, will apply to all those tracks. So if I choose kick, all those tracks went to kick. Not very helpful, but if you add the command or control for PC into that, it'll set up our inputs sequentially. So on the Mac, you hold on option, shift, command. On the PC, you hold on alt, shift, control. Choose our first input, which is kick. And all our inputs get set up sequentially from the kick to the room right. That'll save us a little bit of time. Then we could adjust the panning. Rooms left and right, overheads left and right. And as I said before, I like to have these separate instead of being one stereo track, which would have looked like this. One stereo track. It would look like this instead. But the reason I don't like this is that you can't control the left and right separately. So if I'm balancing my overheads over here, I like to be able to control them. If the left's too low, bring it up. Right's too low, bring that one up. So I could balance my overheads my room is a lot easier by using two mono tracks rather than a stereo track. But if you prefer stereo tracks, that's fine too. I'm going to leave the toms in the middle for now. We might change that later. And that's pretty much it. We're set up and we're ready to start recording. So let's move on.